Hello everyone, I am Rudy Villarreal, I am from Bakersfield, California, and I am honored to be a part of Vertical, the worship community. We are now best friends. Welcome to the community. <laughs> anyway, I'm really excited because I get to talk about one of my favorite topics, um, and that is worship and um, transparency, and that's really what I'm going to focus on today, so let's get started. I gotta tell you first, I did the typical cheesy teacher guy thing, and I have four points for you. It was the easiest way I can take all my thoughts and put them in order. So how do we find transparency in our worship? How do I make sure that my worship is authentic and it's real? And here's some things that I've asked myself or reminded myself of through my walk as a worship leader, and I hope they help you. So here we go. Number one, I like to ask myself, where do I stand? I believe one of the first things we have to do to find ourselves worshiping God authentically, and that is to realize who Jesus is and who we are in comparison. One of the purest forms of worship stems from the understanding or this revelation of God's greatness and our inadequateness. Is that a word? I don't know. In that place is where we can find really true worship. And I'll give you an example. In in Mark chapter 5, there's a, there's a story of this demon-possessed man, and I'm sure you've read it. If you haven't, take a look at it. It's a good story. It's this crazy narrative of, of this wild and, and unclean man who no one's been able to tame him, no one's been able to calm him down, and, and yet Jesus walks into the scene and it was this moment where this demon-possessed man looked at Jesus and realized how inadequate, how unclean he was. It was the realization that Jesus was, was the God of the Most High. How crazy and powerful is that moment where this man who was not, he's not pushed to worship, he's not begged to worship, no one had to tell him to stand to his feet and worship or clap your hands, no one had to do anything. It was simply the realization that God was so great that the man Jesus who was walking nearby was so powerful and it was enough to pull this demon-possessed man to his knees and worship Jesus. When we realize how inadequate we are, how small and how insignificant we are in this universe compared to Jesus, we can't help but fall to our knees and worship him. And it's so real, it's so true, because no one had to beg us, no one had to tell us it was a revelation that we had on our own. How cool is that? All right, number two. Number two is a question um, that I like to ask myself. Am I lifting my heart in worship or just my hands? Throughout the Old Testament, we see that God has set in place these ways that God has uh, commanded his people to worship and certain things they should wear, certain sacrifices that he expected from them. And they're all God-given. This is God commanded. This is the way God wanted it. And uh, what's funny is, is as humans, we always mess up the way God had planned. We see that as time goes on, that the people of God are getting really, really good at rituals. We see in Isaiah chapter 1 that God gets fed up. He's done. He's tired, and quite frankly, he's upset. And I'm not going to read the whole scripture, but if you want, you can go to Isaiah um, chapter 1, verse 11 um, through 17. And basically, in so many words, God says, I am so tired of your sacrifices. Okay, now this is where it gets scary. Listen to this. So God is speaking to the people. He's so upset. They've gotten good at the rituals of worship. And God says this, when you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Even if you offer many prayers, I will not listen. Like, okay, you want to tell scary stories at night? That's what you tell your kids. God gets so upset with the fact that the people of Israel have gotten so good at these ritualistic moments of worship, or they've gotten so good at lifting their hands and so good at saying the certain prayers and eating the certain foods and acting in certain ways. But he gets so upset because people of God are... are or just doing things because they have to. How scary is that? To get to a place where you're so good at doing the things of worship, you forget the God who you worship, and it upsets God to the point where he says, you know, you can pray as much as you want, but I'm not listening. You can raise your hands as high as you want, but I'm not looking. God is saying, I don't care what you're doing with your hands. I want to know where your heart's at. That's something I got to remind myself, got to keep myself on top of. Is, Am I lifting my heart in worship? Or am I just lifting my hands? All right, the third thing um, I've got to remind myself, it's okay to not be okay. We struggle with that, especially people who are on the platform. God hasn't called us to be okay all the time. If we were okay all the time, we wouldn't be in need of him. So I remember someone telling me, they're sharing with me um, the scripture I'm going to share with you. David is known as um, a man after God's own heart. This dude loves God and God loves David. Like it's evident. Scripture is very clear. And David was just so close to God. And you hear David say things like, uh, Yea, though I walk the valley of the shadow of death, I won't fear no evil because you are with me, God. And this, all these great things. But my friend was sharing with me that if you get to Psalms 88, you're going to see a part of David that maybe you haven't seen before. And so anyway, I'm going to read that to you. Basically, David is depressed and he says things like this. Why, God, do you turn a deaf ear? Why do you make yourself scarce? Why are you hiding from me, oh God? And then this is my favorite line. This is the last scripture. This is, this is gold. All right. David says, my only friend I have left is darkness. Really? 
Your only friend is darkness. But it's true. It's what David was feeling. There was nothing wrong with it. I don't think God was in heaven like, oh, really, David? That's what you think? No, God was listening, sitting and, and listening. He loved David. And of course, David was having a bad day. He was having a low day. And God was cool with it. David was real. And, and he was transparent. He was open with God. And he had this moment where he's like, God, where are you? And God's cool with it. That's why I love to remind myself, Rudy, it's okay to not be okay. Anyway, number three, it's okay to not be okay. Alrighty, my last point and, and really my favorite point. So I got to take you to Matthew 22. Uh, so Jesus is talking and, and some of the people, they, they speak up and they ask him a question. They say, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus replies to them and he says, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. And then he says, the second, it's kind of like the first, and it's to love your neighbor as yourself. And the law and the prophets, they hang on these two commandments. In other words, nothing else matters unless you love God and you love people. This is what I remind myself of. Something clicked in my mind as a worship leader. And I remember the day, I remember what happened. And I had spoken to someone about this before and then it didn't become real to me until it happened. So I had this moment where I was in worship and I was, I was enjoying the presence of God. I was enjoying being with Jesus. And I remember saying a few people who weren't as engaged in worship. And I remember breaking for them because I loved them as people so much. I wanted them to feel what I was feeling in God's presence. I wanted them to be a part of what I was experiencing. And I realized that that's why loving God and loving people is so important. And it's so crucial in having authentic worship and being a good worship leader. If I really truly love God like I say I do and like I'm supposed to, then a love for people should grow inside of me. And because I love people, my desire to pull them into this experience with God should be that much greater. And so that's what should fuel us as worship leaders, as people in ministries, is I do this because I love God and I do this because I love people. I want people to experience God the way that I experience God. And it's such a crucial part of being a good worship leader and being someone who's a good, just Christian in general. So that's it. That's all I have to share. It wasn't super profound, and, but it's part of my experience and I hope it was a blessing to you. I hope you watch another The Vertical Worship Community video. Let's just keep building each other for the kingdom. Why not? Anyway, that's it. God bless you. Peace out. Sound is a company that offers pre-recorded and custom loops for worship teams, artists, and young musicians. Our goal is to help facilitate worship and growth through these resources. Timbral Sound offers a wide variety of pre-recorded loops to help fit your sound and musical needs. Custom loops are created for specific songs that you or your worship team need. Please check out our custom loop section for details. Psalms 150, four through six says, praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. This is just the beginning and a few of many resources that Timbrel Sound will have to offer. Please explore our website and contact us with any questions or feedback that you may have. Thank you so much for your support. We look forward to serving you and the kingdom of God.